Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. Welcome to Dual Permanent Magnet Rotor Axial Flux Wind Turbine Series Continuation. This is LED lighting. These three lights stay on 24-7. Se uh, 70 watts worth of solar on the uh, roof there for a couple watts. Ah, I don't think these will go out. These are the heads of flashlights. they got three LEDs in them each. Well, it's about 4 a.m. in the morning. This is a dual permanent magnet rotor axial flux wind turbine we did the series on. This is just sitting there. I got one piece of all thread, 5 8 all thread. I just got the stator sitting up here and seeing how it's set up. Got it mounted to the bench. Right there you'll see the container with all the nuts that I'm going to use, uh, the tapered nuts. And basically uh, they've got rusted, but that's alright. We can clean them up. It's been a long time and I'm kind of anxious to get started on this. Okay, well, uh, I've made a lot of videos and things like that. Didn't have the heart. I really just didn't feel right about editing all that video and putting them out before I finished up with this. These pieces of all thread only need to be about 10 inches. Other than that, they'll get in the way of the prop. The other one is 12 inches, so I'm going to have to cut 2 inches off of it, but this will work. So I'm going to cut this one here at 10 inches and then this one here. Keep it from binding. Don't lift up and try to hold all that. Bend away from your saw blade from grabbing. Go. I ought to just cut one more instead of doing that on the machine. I'll do that off camera. Okay, well I got all the nuts all shined up. Put them on here. I put one on here and slid it in here and here and I left the beveled side out. Remember I beveled all of these. I clean these up, chase the threads. Well, the next thing before you tighten them completely, you need to do put this on the way it's going to go. The three terminals on each side going on here and give it a test test fit. Boy, that fits good. We got one. It's a little snug. Oh. Turn it around here. Ah, that one leans out. Might have to tap it in a little. We'll see what it does first. We don't want to do any bending on anything. Take it all the way down. The top one seems to be a little snug. That's good. We're all the way against the magnet rotor. Well, let's see here. Tap it out. Tap that out just a touch. And that one wants to ride nice. Let's look straight into it. Spins and don't touch. It comes mighty close right here. And got a little more of a gap here. Uh, I think I want this to uh, come down some. So I might bend one down. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. See as it'll spin. Here. Yeah, I know I'm in the way. <laughs> Once again. Oops, those are tight. Give it another test. Spins good. The only drag on this bearing is that new seal. That'll wear down a little bit. I could put a shot of WD-40 on it. That's pretty much the only friction. I got some right here. See how good she spins now. Get that to soak in. Starting to spin a little better. Looking good. Better stop before I break a couple fingers or something. So before I move this, mark where the front of this is. And mark where the back of it is. That'll tell me where to put the nuts. And I can slide it right on down. No danger on this right now. Alright, then I can take this off, put clean up a few more nuts, put that on. And once we got it set pretty much, we'll give it a one rotor test and see what it does. Looking good. I'm kind of guessing about 3 volts at, uh, at 60 RPM. Probably about 6 volts at uh, 120 RPM. And when we get the other rotor on, we'll see quite a bit of a difference. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Okay, I laid a piece of all thread across these magnets. I bring it up here, I've got about a sixteenth of an inch, but it allows me a reference to see how far I bent this. I've got two nuts up here. Oh, what it needed to do was go straight down just a little bit. I think I moved my reference. Well, I'll have to find out another trial fit. We'll do that off camera. Okay, well I got it on and I'm looking at about an eighth inch all the way around. For those who don't go by our system, uh, 
That's about uh, 3 millimeter, or 0.3 centimeter, 0.31 centimeter. Yeah, she's been real nice. And as I look all the way around, it's nice and even and about the same. And I only had to bend one. I put the nuts on there to keep from messing up the threads. That worked out real good. I'm kind of happy with this. Now it's time to take this off and paint it. I wanted to paint it red. Well, don't have any red paint. I'm going to go ahead and paint it white for now. And then we'll get some of the uh, nuts cleaned up and get this thing down. I'm going to go ahead and give it a test anyway. Okay, well, we got this side here wired up. Uh, all three of these terminals here wired up together. And two, I'm um, going off of L1 and L2 for the meter on AC. And got the clock right there. That's one, two, got to speed up. There we go. We're right at about 3.2 volts. And let's see, let's take it up 120 RPM. And about 5.85 volts. Yeah, that means I could have been off on the slower RPM. That's all right. I'm pretty close. For one rotor, that's not bad. When the second rotor gets on, everything multiplies up a little bit more and gets a little bit higher. See if we can get a little bit more adjustment. Yeah, it's right about 5.85 or 5.9. Not too bad. Not too far off a of target. Volume. So many months ago, a friend of mine came down from Brazil to visit for about a week. And he signed this. It's B-E-T-O. Beto Carrera from Brazil. And he did the welding on the end. I found a socket. And we actually cut the end off the socket so that these re... Uh, these all thread would fit all the way through it. We made an extreme deep well socket. Fits right on down there. I just got done drilling the hole. I got the wrench on the back. Something I haven't done was tighten these up all the way. Nice specialty tool to make. Anyone can make it if you have a welder. Good piece of pipe. Kind of missed my friend Beto. Very good friend of mine and boomers. One other thing it's good to talk about while we're on the subject. Magnets. Found we could not get magnets on the plane to go back with them without getting in a whole bunch of trouble because the magnets are so strong that they mess with the navigation devices. Not good. Matter of fact, you can get in lots of trouble. Which also brings me to another subject where people are having a hard time getting magnets where they're at in their country. They are very expensive. I think they're expensive here in the United States. They're a lot more expensive there. Even Mexico, Argentina, uh, Pakistan, just about any foreign country is real hard to get magnets into. They have lots of taxes on them. Well, what Beto did, or what we tried, I suggested, so I know that magnets lose their magnetism when they get hot. Well, we figured out with a heat gun, Beto's favorite term was, let's wreck something. Yeah! <laughs> so, we wrecked some magnets, and we figured if we heated them back up, after they lost their magnetism, wouldn't even stick to anything. We heated them back up to that temperature and put two magnets on each side of the, of the power that you wanted them to go to. Heat them up, put the magnets on them, let them cool. We actually got the uh, magnets a little bit stronger than they were to begin with original. So, anyway, it's just some good news for people who want magnets. If you can get two full strength magnets, get somebody to demagnetize your magnets and send them to you as blocks of metal. And then heat them up, put them between the two magnets, and make you some magnets. Anyway, these pieces kept chipping off, and some of them are thicker than others. So I knocked the rest of them off. They had air between them, uh, behind them. But anyway, the good thing is it protected the magnets. So I took some rust preventive white enamel spray paint, and it seemed to fill all the cracks as well. Too bad I didn't have yellow. From the side, it still looks yellow. But anyway, that took care of that. So that'll get my stator a little bit closer. I'm going to do the same thing on the other one as well. I'd, I'd rather have my magnets closer anyway. The main thing is to protect the magnets. If it's got a scratch in the nickel plating that reaches down into the neodymium iron boron, they will corrode and they'll start puffing up and getting bigger and they will wreck your stator and everything else. So anyway, this sticks real good. Plus it gets my magnets closer and I'm kind of glad of that. Anyway, now we got that all set up. It's now time for me to get some more nuts set down here and let's lower this thing down. All right, one, two, three nuts all cleaned up. One, two, three nut all ready for the stator to go on. Of course, we've got to paint the stator. Got aluminum foil tape to run backwards here. And there you are, easier than falling off the back of an old turnip truck. Well, a couple things to show you here in the meantime. This radio here is a 9 volt radio, 12 volt system. Well, 12 volt LED directional light. Uh, I got to use it on the low power, brings it down to four volts when putting it in series. Cool thing about it. See the light blinking? Bring them. 
percent of their original asking price in June. That's up almost four percent from the same time last year. That means there's virtually every time it uses the power, the light gets on. brighter. Also, yeah, a lot less the current's time going through it. It's in series. Put on the market down over twenty-seven percent. When I shut it off, no current going into the radio, so it shuts it off automatically. Kind of fun. The other thing here, we're looking at 14.12 volts, and the charge controller has got the screwdriver already set in it. I turned it up a little high to fine tune it. When this gets to 14.2, I'm going to turn the screwdriver to the right instead of the left, and that's going to lower the voltage. And the instant this one goes to uh, around 21 volts, I'll know it's open voltage, and that this relay has just turned. Well, I can watch it. The reset on this is just taking this clip off, clipping it back on. I'll show you the circuit here. And a 15 turn variable resistor right here. In series with the coil, you shim right up underneath the magnet. Uh, the electromagnet comes up and you got a contact there. Well, you put a shim on top of that to get it farther away from the magnet, and I'll explain that in a little bit. I don't feel too patient about waiting for it to dry forever. Just a little while. Barely even tacky. She's pretty good. Almost dry. Good enough hood on. All right, got the bottom one in. There we go. Be able to tap it all the way up against them nut. I'd be pretty close to adjustment. Almost perfect gap. I could take it back a little bit more. That's about as even as it can get. Anyway, so that's all set up. Take these off. Put the other nuts on right here. They're much easier than spinning them nuts. You need to use this. Good welding job, Beto. Perfect. Looks good. I don't think it gets much better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful space. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, there we go. <clears throat> Just don't want to turn much. Huh. <laughs> Wonder what's wrong. <clears throat> Must be that wire on the terminals back here shorting it out. <clears throat> Generates electricity it takes from the mechanical. <laughs> That's a motor rotor doing nice. Well, I got this all tightened out and adjusted and got that tested there. I guess I'm going to go ahead and put the other rotor on and we'll see what the difference is in the readings. Thank you very much. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Turnip truck.